Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this second Thursday of the month video recording of the 2022 to 23 school year. I'm Mary Thyssen Milder, and I'm the physical education consultant at the Minnesota Department of Education. This presentation is a product of the professional development plan designed by the Minnesota Department of Education's physical education leadership team made up of state leaders in physical education from the Minnesota Society of Health and Physical Educators, or MNSHAPE, representatives of Minnesota's Developmental Adaptive Physical Education, or MNDAPE, the co-chairs of the Physical Education Standards Committee, and higher education. Our physical education standards are a means to ensure that all students have an equal opportunity to learn the knowledge and skills that are foundational for our students. They provide a clear picture for teaching and learning by identifying essential outcomes for all students to achieve by the end of a grade level, grade band, or course. This word cloud is a great visual that identifies key concepts in our standards. The 2018 Minnesota Academic Standards in Physical Education were developed by physical educators from across the state. The Minnesota legislature directed MDE to adopt and adapt the most recent version of the Shape America Standards and Outcomes with the guidelines that we would maintain the integrity of the national standards. Our document consists of grade level benchmarks laid out in learning progressions at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. The document also includes three appendixes, a glossary of terms, descriptions of activity categories, and critical elements. If you need copies of the standards, you can download them at the MDE or MinShape websites, which I will show you in a few slides. Originally, our standards were to be implemented by the 2021 to 22 school year. However, due to the pandemic, the Minnesota legislature delayed full implementation until the 2022 to 23 school year. This slide identifies the key topics in the MDE implementation assistance plan. Professional development topics are available online. Our first year of professional development allowed us to offer face-to-face -face workshops in regions across the state. When the pandemic interrupted those trainings, videos were created to highlight the key concepts and the topics covered in the first two years of professional development. This slide identifies those topics. They can be accessed at both the MinShape and MDE websites. This slide identifies the release dates and the topics to be addressed this school year. Our focus today is to talk about formative and summative assessment. This slide gives you the URLs of the websites that have all the resources available for the physical education standards. That is at the MDE website and the MinShape website. During today's presentation, we will provide a brief overview of Shape America's essential components of physical education and review formative and summative assessment. Shape America has identified the essential components of physical education that provide structure for a physical education program. They created a guidance document for the components. We will use it to break down the essential components of physical education and outline why it is a key element of a well-rounded education for all students. This document, along with all documents and resources identified in this presentation, is available on the Shape America website. Defining the essential components of physical education raises awareness for the critical policies and practices that guide school districts and schools in addressing students' educational needs. School districts and schools also must establish the written curriculum that defines what is to be taught, guides rigorous instruction that supports the curriculum, and identifies student assessment that will provide evidence 
of student learning. The essential components encompass four fundamental areas, policy and environment, curriculum, appropriate instruction, and student assessment. Effective practices within each of these areas support the delivery of quality physical education. Today, we will examine best practices in assessment. The final essential components of physical education is assessment. At its core, assessment requires gathering evidence of student learning and making inferences on students' progress and growth based on that evidence. The purpose of assessment is to provide evidence of student learning and students' achievement towards outcomes and standards. Teachers can use them to plan for future instruction, provide feedback to students, formalize the observation process, and document program effectiveness. Any learning program is made up of assessments that serve different purposes. A final assessment demonstrates proficiency in the standards and benchmarks that were addressed in the unit. Smaller assessments build towards the larger assessment, allowing the teacher to check for understanding and course correction to make sure that all students are on track to achieve unit objectives. First assessment at the curriculum level will be addressed, then assessment at the unit or lesson level. States and school districts require physical educators to develop and implement annual assessments aligned with state standards and grade level benchmarks that provide evidence of student learning. Multiple terms are utilized to refer to the evidence of student learning, grade level outcomes or GLOs, student learning objectives or SLOs, student growth outcomes or SGOs, or student growth measures. SGMs. Regardless of what they're called, they determine what students will know and be able to do at the end of a course of study or grade based on the relevant standards, curriculum goals, and student learning objectives or outcomes. At the curriculum level, student assessment should align with the state physical education standards and grade level benchmarks. They should be included in the written physical education curriculum along with administrative protocols. Include evidence-based best practices that measure student achievement in all areas of instruction, be graded in a way that relates directly to student learning objectives identified in the written physical education curriculum, and follow protocols for reporting and communicating student progress to students and parents or caregivers. Assessments in physical education units and lessons include conducting formative pre-assessments to learn where students are at the beginning of a learning sequence, ongoing formative assessments during instruction to check for understanding, and summative assessments at the close of a unit or inst instructional sequence to provide a comprehensive summary of student progress. It's important to identify the difference between formative and summative assessment. Formative assessment informs teaching. They tell us where a student is at the beginning of a unit. Throughout a unit of study, formative assessment measures whether or not students are on track to achieve the intended outcomes and helps identify areas of difficulty. Summative assessments are designed to measure student outcomes and are used to determine a final grade. Summative assessments sum up what each student knows and can do after instruction, practice, and feedback have taken place. Formative assessment is ungraded, flexible, and creative. The results of formative assessments should be used in two ways. Students receive feedback based on the assessment. This feedback should allow students to improve their performance in the preparation for the summative assessment. Teachers can use the data gathered from each formative assessment to adapt instruction to ensure that all students achieve the desired outcomes and are prepared for the final. It is not enough to determine whether a student is making progress towards proficiency. Teachers should use the information to shape teaching. 
formative assessment results in form if students are ready to continue instruction or if review is needed or if reteaching the skill or content is necessary before moving on. If students are on target or progressing rapidly, consider ways to deepen the learning or extend it to other contexts. If a student or fall, is falling short of making or critical errors, use that information to determine where to focus efforts and which concepts to reinforce. Here's a formative assessment example. Students self-assess a skill using a teacher's criteria, for example, a checklist, while the student participates in a game or game-like activity. The teacher can then take the data from the student's self-assessment to determine if they are ready to move on to the next piece of instruction. Here are some examples of formative assessments. Pre-assessments, observations, rubrics, checklists, rating scales, physical activity logs, portfolios, and projects. Formative assessments don't need to be complex. They can be as simple as observing students why they complete a task. The key is to use the information gathered to determine where to go next. By contrast, summative assessment is graded and provides an opportunity for students to demonstrate whether they have achieved the intended outcomes. Summative assessments show what students know and are able to do. Summative assessments are conclusions based upon a statistical analysis of data, such as percentiles, standard scores, or other statistical comparisons, and are used to assess overall achievement. The line between formative and summative is not always crystal clear. For example, portfolios can be used for either summative or formative assessments. The thing to consider is the weight of the assessment. Is the purpose of the assessment to provide feedback on students' ability or knowledge? Then it is formative. Does the assessment measure how much a content a student has learned or can perform? Then it's summative. It's important teachers follow school district or school protocols for reporting and communicating student progress to students or parents or guardians. Here is an example of an elementary standards-based progress report from SHAPE America. Fitness testing is a valuable part of fitness education when integrated appropriately into a comprehensive physical education curriculum. However, Students' fitness scores should not be used to grade students or evaluate physical education teachers. See Shape America's position statement on appropriate and inappropriate practices related to fitness testing. The appropriate fitness guidelines are organized into a grid, which includes a side-by-side -side comparison of appropriate and inappropriate practices in elementary middle and high school physical education classes. These side-by-side -side comparisons are then organized into sections of areas for concern for physical education. To assist with employing a wide variety of instructional strategies and assessments, Shape America has created a document entitled Appropriate Instructional Practices Guidelines K-12, a side-by-side -side comparison. This document outlines developmentally appropriate and inappropriate practices in elementary, middle, and high school physical education classes and is organized into five separate sections, learning environment, instructional strategies, curriculum, assessment, and professionalism. The guidelines are organized into a grid, organized by side-by-side -side comparisons of appropriate and inappropriate practices. These side-by-side -side comparisons are then organized into sections of areas of concern. The assessment section is full of great information, but can be a lot to take in at once. To familiarize yourself with the document, pick one section to explore further, then pick another. Rate yourself in each of the areas as doing well, or needs improvement, or practice needs to stop. 
Complete the student assessment section of the physical education checklist by marking each item as yes, no, or in progress. Make notes in the comment section regarding the current state of each item. Use the guidance for completing the checklist. This video has provided an overview of summative and formative assessment. For more detailed videos around assessment and physical education, additional videos have been created. They are entitled Best Practices in Physical Education Assessment, Beyond Bundling, Writing Performance Outcomes in Physical Education, Best Practices in Physical Education Grading, and Applying Physical Education Standards-Based Assessment and Grading Practices. They are available on the MDE and MinShape websites. Thanks for listening to our presentation regarding the essential component of assessment in physical education. Tune in next month as we pull everything together from our standard implementation series. I again encourage you all to utilize the available resources on both the MDE and MinShape websites. These videos are intended to assist you on your standard implementation journey. I wish you all good health and happy teaching.